really want a cutie in SF uh, Twitter feed. Um, so my name's Hannah. And I'm Prest. Um, and we're on the communities team at, here at Code for America, and we're excited to tell you guys about National Day, National Day of Civic Hacking, specifically five apps brigades created during National Day of Civic Hacking um, that you should know about. Um, please use the hashtag that we've created. It's super simple. Um, and we're really anticipating some good feedback. Um, so National Day of Civic Hacking took place May 31st to June 1st. Um, there are 123 events in 103 cities around the world. And we're really excited that brigades organized 47 of those. Um, so there was, this was an impressive organizing feat. Um, but we're here to talk about the apps created. And we chose these apps um, not only because they're fantastic and they should be celebrated, um, but also because they kind of um, showcase some of the broader themes of technology that brigades build throughout the year. Up in Portland on National Day of Civic Hacking, the Portland Metro government and Code for Portland, a new brigade in Portland, got together to uh, work on a new trails application that's built on top of a new data standard that's being worked on right here at Code for America called Open Trails. So the application that they built based on this data is called Trail Editor. With Trail Editor, you go out, take a photograph of a trail, you email it to the application's email inbox, which automatically creates um, Open Trails related data, and then you go onto the web editor in order to add critical information to that, like, is there a restroom on site? Is this trail uh, accessible for handicapped people? Is there parking and stuff like that? But not only did the, the government and Code for Portland get together to make this app on National Day of Civic Hacking, they even met up again a week later during National Trails Day to go on a joint hike to test the app and take photographs of uh, trailheads in Portland's beautiful Forest Park together. All right, this next one's called Unlo Unlock Philly. Um, and it's an app that helps people access um, Philadelphia who have previously found that difficult to do. So maybe folks in wheelchairs, elderly people, um, parents with strollers, et cetera. Um, this includes information about public access, facility services, et cetera. Um, so what this means for a Philadelphian um, in a wheelchair or a dad pushing a stroller um, is that they can get real-time uh, data about the status of an elevator, say, in a subway station before they get on the train. Um, and the really exciting part about this app is that it was built, it wasn't built in the silo. Um, it was built with a community group called Philadelphia Link. Um, which is a coalition of groups um, that are focusing on disability issues in Philadelphia. So really cool. Connecting for Good is a nonprofit in Kansas City, Missouri that connects uh, public housing to internet through building mesh networks. And they also run some digital literacy classes for underserved folks. They got together with Code for Kansas City at National Day of Civic Hacking to redeploy an instance of Biz Friendly a branded instance that could run in uh, Connecting for Goods classrooms where people can take self-guided lessons on how to do some important uh, digital literacy tasks. So one of the things that they also did at National Day for Civic Hacking is that they got together to run a content-a-thon where people wrote a bunch of different self-guided lessons on things like how to look up uh, nutritional information on Google, how to deal with PDFs on the internet, and how to use Google Maps effectively. Um, all right, this next one, SF, or SF Housing Policy Brief. Um, so this is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It presents key data and an overview of current policies um, with the goal of informing the discussion about housing availability in San Francisco. Um, so this, the cool one about this is actually led by someone who is in the room, um, our uh, San Francisco's own Chief Data Officer, Joy Bonaguro. Um, so Joy, who's right there, um, came out to... She came out to Code for San Francisco for a two-day hackathon um, and led a group uh, to get the project off the ground. Um, and what's really exciting about this is it just showcases um, the relationship that we imagine between the city um, and its residents. So both, both parties rolling up their sleeves um, to make the city work better. All right. Um, and this last project showcases how brigades work together. So over National Day in Chicago, um, a project group pitched an idea for a pantry app, uh, or food pantry app. And uh, what the brigade basically said was, you know, instead of starting from scratch, we should talk to our friends in Code for Boston um, and see what they did for their pantry pickup app. Um, and basically, the Chicago Brigade then reused that code um, to, to, um, to build their app in Chicago. So just brigades working smarter together, um, working more efficiently. So what the takeaway is, is that brigades build awesome stuff for public use. 
brigades build on open data standards. We collaborate with community groups right here in the city of San Francisco and wherever there are brigades. Uh, we redeploy apps and make them even cooler than they were before we redeploy them in a different place. We also work on projects with government partners and we partner with other brigades around the world to um, bring the civic technology and civic innovation movement to all people. Join, join your brigade in your city and join the civic tech movement uh, for the betterment of all humanity. <laughs> So uh, that's a little hard to follow um, <laughs> humanity, but um, uh, I'm Tom Buckley, and um, uh, I'm working with the city of uh, Mesa, Arizona, uh, with my partners Peter and Wendy, uh, who are out there in the audience, um, and uh, we're also working with Arizona State University. Um, <clears throat> Mesa is um, a part of the metropolitan area of Phoenix, um, and uh, and we're like a lot of the other groups uh, in this this block here. We're talking about uh, basically. Uh, how to better connect uh, residents with their local government. Um, so let's talk about Mesa. Let's start with Mesa. Um, Mesa is uh, makes up basically the court, bottom quarter uh, block of this this image here, um, and this is a uh, an image of built up area of the Phoenix area in 1972, um, and uh, it has changed uh, pretty rapidly in the past uh, 40 years. Uh, the population has grown and Mesa has grown tenfold um, from about 30,000 to about uh, 450,000 now. Um, that population is also uh, a quarter Hispanic, most of whom speak Spanish at home, uh, a quarter Mormon, um, and about a quarter of the houses are either vacant or mobile. So um, you have a disparate uh, set of population and um, uh, some interesting physical characteristics. Um, and that creates kind of a, a challenge for the government in terms of getting feedback uh, and then having places where they can kind of find a cross-section of community having a discussion. Um, so uh, we often heard from council members that also that they, they kind of, uh, they heard this is a, a sort of a common problem you hear among cities is you hear from a small vocal minority, um, but you don't hear from a large majority of people for whom things are fine, uh, they commute to work and uh, they come back and they don't have time to go to uh, public meetings. Um, so uh, we've seen that the inter internet can kind of help in this situation in terms of lowering the cost of uh, contributing um, to uh, the discussion uh, about relevant issues. Uh, and sometimes these, this results in kind of surprising um, communication channels that the government might not expect. Uh, a recent example in Mesa, which uh, our city partner Ian Linson, who I hope is listening, hi Ian, if you are, um, is uh, a, 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 a sort of contentious um, uh, discussion about renaming a park after a slain police officer, um, renaming a historic park, um, was resolved uh, online through uh, a change.org petition. Um, and uh, what, what the promise of this is that, you know, that there, are, there, there are channels on the internet for people that have the, these kinds of discussions. Um, and we think there's a lot of promise in, in, in looking at all these channels and making sure that the government can effectively use them uh, or get feedback from them. So let's talk about the challenges uh, for the government in this space and for the community in terms of uh, using them. Um, First of all, how do we facilitate um, uh, the kinds of interactions that happen in these online spaces? And how do we connect across the online spaces so that um, you know, the feedback that people give in one channel is actually goes back into what the, the government is using for their formal feedback system? Um, and how do we get residents to talk to government and not just in uh, a particular uh, channel that they're most comfortable in? Um, so we took a look at just kind of where matters are discussed right now uh, in Mesa. Uh, this is a screenshot of an application that the city uses to talk about, uh, for example, here they're talking about uh, uh, a main street rehabilitation project um, and improvement of the streetscape. Um, here's where residents talk about something like that. Uh, here we have a resident tweeting about how they might reimagine that, uh, that particular streetscape or what they think about that particular streetscape. Um, <clears throat> so what we'd like to do is to kind of connect the dots between those two uh, conversations uh, and hopefully allow uh, the, these, the resident that has you know, a, a valid opinion, but maybe not the time to engage and understand what the business of government looks like through this kind of complicated government website, 
um, allow them to engage in that discussion and give valuable feedback that the government wants about uh, projects like this. Um, so uh, 2012 fellow, uh, Ben Sheldon, uh, in, said um, that uh, go to the people. Uh, and we're, we're, we're hoping that our application kind of falls within this vein, uh, similar to change.org and many other applications out there where we're going out to the spaces in which people are comfortable talking and trying to make those part of the formal process of, uh, of, of discussion. So our application, um, a prototype of it is you are here. And, uh, basically the idea is that uh, the residents can enter in uh, their address and get back, um, first of all, their council member and a kind of personalized view of who that council member is through their tweets and Facebook um, and any other channels that they might use. Um, and in addition to that, allow them to uh, communicate back to that council member about legislation that is relevant to them, uh, local to the, their address, uh, before uh, that legislation goes up for a vote. Um, so our goals are to get more people talking about, mentioning, talking to uh, the government through the channels that they're comfortable with. Um, and um, if you want to help us, we'll have a demo table in the back, and uh, please come, come back and uh, talk to us. Thank you.